I've put a single speed uh, freewheel on there because that's all I need. I don't need any more. So I've sprayed that with, um, what is it now, acrylic? No, not acrylic. Uh, what's the other one? Begins with an E. Enamel, that was the one. I've just sprayed it with that. Um, now the other thing I've done is, this, this is the top piece uh, and I've ground, you can see where it was, I've ground the lettering off purely so as I can get the disc um, on there properly. It, on mine it doesn't catch because I've got 203mm discs on there, um, but it's still a bit tight, there is, there is a bit of a where the lettering, anyway whatever, so I've ground that off. I've attached this. This is a E6000 glue, I think. Oh, there it is. It's this stuff, uh, which goes up to 80 degrees. I've tested it. It's fine. So I've used that around here. So as it seals it, glues it in place, it ain't going absolutely anywhere. Fantastic stuff, that is. So what I've got to do now is put... this back in and I've decided that I'm going to keep the wiring as it is it's just too much of a job to actually get all that out and redo the lot because you've got all this, the phase wires you've got the whole sense wires you've got absolutely everything the temperature sensors and it ain't bad it's not gone through I'll, I'll protect it I'll put some heat shrink around it when I've fitted it now I've still got to put my, here's the other side obviously, I've still got to put the ferrofluid in. So I've got to find my ferrofluid, which I haven't got a faintest idea where I put it, but I know I've got some. And then I'm going to put it on, fit it, drip it in, spray it on, I don't know. Right, this is ferrofluid. I want to show you what happens with this stuff. You don't actually, believe it or not, you don't squeeze it. What you do is you hold it close. I don't know if you can see it, but it just it sucks itself out of the tube. <laughs> oh, amazing. No idea how much to put on this, but I know you're supposed to put it between the magnets. Turn that round. Trying to do this with one hand isn't very easy. Now this stuff you don't want to get on your hands. I look I have. <laughs> What this stuff does, um, oh shit! What this stuff does is the gap between um, between the motor and the state. Sorry, the magnets and the stator. Trying to concentrate on this and do this at the same time is bloody hard and film it and everything else. Yeah, the 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 gap between the the stator and the magnets. Uh, what this does is it fills it. Now, obviously, there is got, there's got to be a gap between the stator and the magnets, otherwise it will start binding. So what this stuff does is it fills that gap, and it acts as a coolant, so you don't get anywhere near as much heat. Well, you do get heat. You get the same amount of heat, but it's actually transferred. It's transferred across rather than sitting on the stator itself. I'm, I'm a bit worried about this actually. <laughs> oh, my nerves are going. So what I'm going to do now, simply put that back on.
which is not going to be easy to actually get it back in properly because this motor is now pulled against the side magnets so I've got to feed the wires through obviously you've only got you've got nine of those that actually hold the wheel on if those come out your wheel falls off it will fall off there is no two ways about it it'll fall off you know what happens when the wheel falls off this is a circlip and it was around there it was actually around there to stop the phase wires from touching the casing which I think is a bloody terrible idea because mine is actually you can't see it now but mine was actually catching um, on that and it was wearing a bloody hole through it with the vibrations but anyway I've put, I don't know if you can see it, I've put a cable tie, zip tie, whatever you want to call it around there now uh, that will stop, that will make that come out at more of an angle which is what I want and stop it from actually catching on the disc which is another thing I'll show you in a bit uh, I've put thread lock on the case screws which you're not really supposed to because it's alloy but it's even when I tighten these things up they didn't feel tight there's no spring washers and no nothing if those come off all the way around you're going to end up with toasty bollocks when you're scraping it down, around the, down the road on them so make sure that your bolts are all tight and put some thread lock or something on it get rid of that as well put a bloody cable tie around there instead with the disc itself um, what I had to do was countersink uh, these holes here uh, because the bolts that were sticking out there they're like dome, dome bolts they were actually rubbing on the on the motor which you can't see anymore uh, this cable tie has actually pulled that completely out of the way and I know it's still got to go like that because the axle's got to fit in there somehow ah oh, shit <laughs> I never thought of that, that's got to go further down which means I need a smaller cable tie no, I've kept the same cable tie, I've just moved it a bit it's sticking up that side, it's gone down that side so there's plenty of room for the uh, what you call it now, the frame and the torque arm to sit up against there. This part of the video was sponsored by my fucking pocket, not your pocket, my pocket. I bought all of these with my money, not yours, mine. So I've got here, these are the bits that I bought. Now these you've seen before. These are the headlights that I had on my old bike, which are absolutely fantastic. When I can open up. When I can open up. I didn't prepare for this. Fingers, Tony. What fingers? <laughs> These are the headlights. Uh, 30, I think they're 30 watt, are they? 30 watt LED headlights, they are fantastic. So I'm having two of them. I've already got two, but I bought two more because they're only about five quid, six quid, don't know. They are fantastic. So I'm having two of them. These are switches for the handlebars. Uh, they're aluminium and they've got a switch on them. Three position switch, that one. These are waterproof which I'm not going to be using, I didn't realise till after I've ordered them I've got two of them, didn't realise that they weren't waterproof but anyway, they're a three position switch these are waterproof, or apparently anyway they're IP rated, which means that they're not waterproof and again, it's a three position switch this one here is a double one which has got a two position switch and a three position switch this one here is a full blown motorbike one which I've had for about 12 months I was going to put a horn and lights and god knows what and indicators and never got round to it this is a, a three switch and it's illuminated as well it's got a, a latch on there a latch there and that one's a momentary I don't know if it's supposed to be a latch but it just isn't I don't know whether to use this 
This is apparently IP rated as well, which I'm going to have to test or check it. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not, no, I don't trust it because it's got no, I'm going to have to take it apart somehow. How the hell, oh yeah, there's two screws under there, two uh, grub screws. So I'm going to test this because that will be perfect for the BMS and other things. I can't think now. The one I want to show you is this one. No, it's this one. This can be used for the BMS and the Sabaton. One switch. What you do is, when you fire it up, you put it like that. And when the BMS stops bleeping, you switch it back to zero and the BMS is then armed. And then you switch it up like that and that arms a Sabaton. And you want to switch the BMS off, all you do is you flick it down to there until it starts bleeping. Obviously the, the sabaton has been disarmed and then when it's finished you just put it back into the central position. Now for anyone who wants to nick your bike, for anyone who wants to nick your bike, that's going to be impossible sequences, only you know that sequence. And if anyone nicks my bike, oh shit you know the sequence now. I'll have to kill you. There's going to be a link below for these things. This is, um, we'll say item, because they're all switches, to make it easy, uh, this is going to be item one. This one, which is a three, uh, three position, will be item two. This one, which is a three position, double switch, blah, 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 uh, single throw, double throw, blah, whatever, that's three. And this is going to be item four, just to make it easy so if people want to buy them. Obviously this one's eliminated, the rest of them aren't. And that one's going to be item 5 if I can find the listing for it, because it was quite a while ago. And this one, excuse me, this one's going to be headlights, believe it or not. So, links below to these things. I'm going to be using either that one, that one or that one. I can't use those because they're not IP rated. But I need to do some tests. I need to take that apart and just see if there's actually rubber rings on there. Because I can't really see. Uh, but by the time the description of the video goes out, there will be uh, uh, an analysis done. I'm just going through all these switches and plugs and God knows what I've got here. Uh, just to make sure that the, what they call waterproof is waterproof. Uh, number one, a flappy piece of wire in a connector like that, you know, that's not waterproof for a start. It's, it's not rattly in there, but it's definitely not waterproof. Uh, the other thing as well, these things are actually held in with glue, silicon glue. So, the way to get it out is you just get, I've got, my, oh, I've got my scissors like that, and you just leave her inside like that and just gently prise it out, and it does come out quite easily. Uh, what I'm using is E6000 because it's waterproof and these things ain't going to come out again. I've checked the connections, the connections are fine. Uh, you've got to be careful of cold solder on these because if you don't have enough heat... <sighs> yeah. What happens is the connectors come off or the, the solder joints come off when they do them in China because they always use lead free now. So. Anyway, I'm going to connect, I'm going to put that in there, I'm going to ram glue in the inside there, pull it through and then that'll do. Obviously make sure you've got your your water proofing connector, what's it cover and everything else is already on, over the top. Then fill it full of glue and just push it in and then get a cable tie on that side just to hold it in place, make sure it don't move. So that's what I'm going to do with them. This is the back wheel. There. Uh, I've trued it up as much as I possibly can. It's near enough, near enough perfect.